God has been good again. Welcome again to many messages. Uh, Father, please be with me and guide my thoughts as I present. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God never said how much sex to have. Let me say that again. God never said how much sex to have. Uh, the weaker sex has definitely become the stronger sex because of the weakness of the stronger sex for the weaker sex. One, let me say that again because somebody may have missed it. Uh, the weaker sex has definitely become the stronger sex uh, because of the weakness of the stronger sex for the weaker sex. Uh, one of uh, the most controlling forces and activity in the world is sex. I leave that there. Priests, pilots, popes, pastors, prostitutes, pimps, uh, or they all claim that they cannot do without it. Some of them won't come out so open and say, but I'm telling you, priests, pastors, popes, prostitutes, pimps, and all types of individuals, uh, they claim, hey, we can't do without sex. Is it a curse or a blessing? Uh, when, <laughs> now, careful how you answer that question, eh? Uh, is sex a curse or is it a blessing? <laughs> uh, when you check, uh, some researchers say, uh, that, and you must check the research, that it seems as though the people who are married have less sex than those who are unmarried. That's what some researchers say. Uh, the world is so filled with people uh, totally addicted to sex. Well, shouldn't they be? That's a question. I'm not answering the question. Shouldn't they be uh, based on the way God has created us as sexual beings? Uh, please understand, please understand that sex did not originate with the devil. It originated with God. Understand? Now, I'm a pastor talking, so I have to come biblical. So listen to this. Uh, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28 says, And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Uh, now in this text is the first mention in the Bible, the first mention in the Bible of sex in this text. Uh, because the text says that God said to Adam and Eve, after creating them, be fruitful and multiply. Straight to the point. By, by the way, when we are discussing the, the subject sex, is not any and everybody qualified, you know. And if you discuss sex and you don't use the Bible, you don't qualify. You have to use the Bible. Because after all, the Bible tells us what is the origin of man. And here, the first mention of sex is Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28, when God said, uh, be fruitful and multiply. Uh, now, uh, sex was not, I emphasize this, sex was not invented uh, by the devil. It was invented by God because God manufactured human beings, uh, male and female. And when he said to them, be fruitful and multiply or go ahead and have sex, uh, God was talking uh, to a husband and a wife who he, God, was the marriage officer. Understand what is happening there. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, uh, in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, I notice, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Uh, so God formed mankind, and God formed man's sex organs also, a male and female. And afterwards, uh, Papa God said, uh, You can be fruitful and multiply. Hear this now. I never saw in the Bible where God said how much sex you should have. I'm being biblical. He said go ahead and have, but I never saw him limiting or saying how much. Uh, let me tell you why people want to limit sex. People want to limit sex because they are thinking, they have a wrong concept of God. They are thinking that God is spoiled sport. God doesn't want you to enjoy sex. 
That's what people are thinking. But that is not in the Bible. In the contrary, you would notice uh, when you look at Solomon's writing, you're going to notice uh, Solomon is saying, you must enjoy the wife of your youth. Notice what he's saying. He's saying, be satisfied with your with her breast. Uh, Solomon is saying that, not me. Uh, the word of God. So I am I'm making the point uh, that you must not tell individuals how much sex they should have because God didn't choose uh, to tell a husband and wife that. Understand what is uh, going on. Now listen to this now. Listen to this. Uh, here, uh, purpose of sex. Uh, no, no. Let me, let me go back and explain something. People constantly and Christians, Christians, you must stop that. Christians constantly want to put sex in the category of sin. I am talking about sex uh, between honorable people, a husband and wife, uh, because the Bible points out in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4 uh, that marriage is honorable. And when two honorable individuals uh, willingly have sexual intercourse, uh, you can't tell them that that is wrong. Don't put that in the category of sin. And people like to think that God doesn't want individuals to enjoy themselves. No. Come off a little bit from sin. Hear this now. God created a garden. And he put all manner of fruits in the garden. And allowed Adam and eat Eve to eat whatever. Whether it's apple, sapodilla, uh, mango, oranges, you name it, grapes, whatever. You know when people eating, how they enjoy themselves? Hey man, when you suck a nice Judy mango, are you sucking and it run down and you, you lick up? You know, you enjoy yourself. So I'm making the point outside of sex that, listen man, God originally, uh, when he created the Garden of Eden, he wanted Adam and Eve to enjoy themselves. So stop that, Christians. Stop that. The limit, stop it. It's not the right thing. Uh, so don't, 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 don't limit individuals and say god said you wouldn't find it in the bible god never said a stick to my team never said how much sex a husband or wife should have now purpose uh, before i close purpose of sex one to reproduce at the beginning of family right not to keep husband and wife close glued together so that when you go someplace you always want to come back home, husband and wife. Uh, listen, there are three G's about sex, you know. Uh, it is good because God created it. It is glue. It pulls people together. And it is a gift from God. A gift from God. Uh, uh, then, then, listen, uh, to keep husband and wife, let me read uh, in terms of uh, frequency, in terms of God didn't limit. Uh, uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 4 and 5 says, Here it is now, husbands and wife, defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time that he may give yourselves uh, to fasting and prayer and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency or for your inconsistency. Why did I read this text? I read this text to let you understand that when people married, be careful. Don't you say by yourself that, hey, I am going to go on a fast and including in that fast, I wouldn't sleep with my wife. Don't do that. You cannot do that. You're not permitted to do that. We're talking about people well and normal and strong and healthy. Uh, the, the Bible here says that you must consult with your partner and get consent. But the important part here is, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency. Uh, listen, uh, when individuals are sex starved, uh, that individual can be easily tempted from a member of the opposite sex. We talking religion here? We talking religion here? Understand? Uh, so uh, the text is saying, hey, be careful. Be careful. Don't say, uh, I am so religious. I'm, stay, I'm staying away from my married partner. Notice I'm emphasizing married. I'm staying away from my married partner. I, I won't indulge in sexual intercourse. And you make that decision by yourself. No, that's not right. Uh, the text says, uh, don't defraud one another. By the way, the best person to stop your wife or your husband from committing adultery is you. Yeah, man. You know what he likes or what she likes. 
And when you do not deny them, when you willingly agree and satisfy that desire, guess what happens? It is easy for the person to want to stay with you. Purpose of sex, not to have sexual int uh, intimacy and bonding. And it reminds us of God's love for mankind. You can find that in Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verse 31 and 32. Understand. Uh, understand uh, now listen to this now uh, please understand that what God created is good and it's a gift and it is sacred children and teenagers unmarried individuals I won't stand here and try to frighten you what I will say to you is just as Joseph could have remained sexually pure, even though Mrs. Potiphar dressed up in all kind of thing so as to seduce Joseph. Joseph could have abstained even though he was in prison. And by the way, girls, don't forget Esther. Esther doesn't even have her real parents and she remains sexually pure. So I won't stand here and try to scare you about sexually transmitted diseases and STI. I'm not doing that. What I would say is by the help of God, you can abstain like Mary, the mother of Jesus, like Esther and like Joseph because that is the right thing to do. And please, as I close here, understand that really when you wait until the right time and i'm switching up to teenagers and, and and younger persons when you wait until the right time to be involved in sexual intercourse you know what happens your mind is clear you don't have a guilty conscience you don't have to feel strange if a relationship is broken up because you know that you were not sexually active with that person. That's another subject. When people are not sexually active with an individual who they have a, an unmarried relationship with, you know what happens? When they're ready to break up, it's easier because a piece of you has not been left with that individual. This evening, as I close, remember, sex is from God. Not from the devil. The devil cannot invent something as nice as that. No. But you must understand that the devil is trying to mess up and to dirty, for want of a better word, and to use sex as something negative. That's why we have the rampage of pornography and individuals who are looking at pornography and wants, uh, want to come and try the same things on their wives, etc. Uh, listen, our husbands, I am saying the devil shows keen interest in sex in terms of making it distasteful. But remember, it's from God and it should be used to glorify God. Our God and Father, thanks ever so much. For your goodness thanks for creating sex so that husbands and wives and family within families can enjoy it because it is not something evil it's part of joy and happiness and intimacy that you created that you wanted husband and wife to enjoy bless homes especially husbands and wives in a special way and help that they may understand that sexual intercourse is about the two of them alone. The two of them alone, uniting and nobody else. Bless God, fearing husbands and wives. And help someone who is not married as yet, uh, but living home. Let them understand that that's not the right way to go. Shocking up and living home is not the right way to go. But they should do the honorable thing and be Guide us through the rest of the evening, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thanks a lot for listening. Uh, see you tomorrow as we have another episode of Mini Messages. May God bless you.